It's where in 1 Samuel 17, beginning reading in verse 26, the Bible, up to this point, David has shown up. Goliath has been coming out. The army of the Philistines is set up on one side. The army of God's chosen people set up on the other side. And they are uh, looking there at the valley of Eli and they're getting ready to go to battle, but nobody's going to go to battle. They just won't fight. For 40 days, a giant named Goliath, a Philistine, has come out and he has been uh, mocking God and God's people and they've been hiding. They've been hiding out now for 40 days. David shows up And he's supposed to be bringing Lunchables to everybody. He's supposed to bring bread and cheese and probably some little processed pepperonis. It didn't say that, but if you study the Hebrew text deep, I think it's in there. And um, yeah, maybe a little dessert for a few. But anyway, uh, he's supposed to come and bring refreshments. They didn't need to be refreshed. What they needed, David should have just brought a boot that he could have kicked everyone in the bottom with what they needed. You know, guys, there's, there's things worth dying for. And when God calls us to do something and you know that's what God's called you to do, there ought not be anything that can pull you off that. And it was obvious that God wanted the Philistines killed. And for 40 days, they sat and they hid. And several times a day, Goliath would come out and everybody hit the deck. Well, David comes up and he's like, man, this doesn't make any sense. And his, the people get mad at him. His brother gets mad at him. And even the king has some unkind things to say. We'll begin in verse 26. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him uh, after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab, that's his older brother, it says, uh, His anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and thy naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, bless God, I know that's right. And, uh, oh, actually, that's not what he said exactly. I think that's what he meant, though. And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul And he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able. What a pitiful thing. What a pitiful thing to tell a young person. Thou art not able. Well, he's got his reasons. Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb from out of the flock. And I went after him, and smote him, and delivered, delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by the, his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. I want to preach on this. Kill all the lions and all the bears. Kill all the lions and all the bears. I may, get a, I may get some hate mail from PETA, but kill all the lions and kill all the bears. Father, we love you and we thank you for your word. And Lord, we just pray that you'd help us to be courageous in our Christian life. Father, we, we just want to do what you'd have us to do. 
and we want to do it in a way that you'd be pleased with. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. And you can be seated. <clears throat> David is not, a, not unaccustomed to having things go against him. Being a young shepherd out in the field, David probably didn't look very scary. But he killed a lion. Killed a bear. I've been, I've seen lions in the, uh, in, in the zoos. I've seen one years ago in a private reserve where sometimes people get killed. <clears throat> I've seen a lot of videos online where lions kill other animals, where they attack people, and it, it's scary. Lions are nothing to play around about. Uh, we've seen a lot of bears. We've been up to Yellowstone and seen bears, uh, seen bears in Colorado. There's no cages, no fences. You just keep your distance. A bear can run about 30 miles an hour. I can't. <laughs> I gave up running years ago. I read in the Bible. It said, the, the wicked flee when no man pursueth. So I don't run because the wicked flee when no man pursueth. But if a bear was coming after me, I, you know, I don't know what, what we'd do. I've seen, they say don't run. Instinctually, I think I would want to run. And uh, they say you're supposed to stand your ground and make yourself big. I, I got that covered just in case. In case a bear sneaks up on me, I look big. And then, uh, and then they say even yell at the bear. And I've seen a couple of videos where that worked. And there's probably a bunch of videos that got destroyed where that didn't work. And uh, so... We were in Yellowstone a few years ago and we were driving along and some people were stopped and anytime somebody stops in Yellowstone, you need to stop and see what they're looking at. And sometimes it's a big elk or something, but sometimes it's a bear. And there was a cinnamon black bear, which means he's supposed to be a black bear, but he's brown. And um, so we, we pull up and we look and he's up unbelievably high in this tiny tree. And his mom and daddy had put him up there and left him there, and he's curled up in a ball. If uh, catch somebody in my family, we can show you some cool pictures of this cinnamon black baby bear, maybe a teenager, up in the, up in the, um, up in the top of this tree. And, and the uh, park ranger's there, and he's telling people, go, do not stop. The parents are here. The parents are here. So we went around the corner, and there was a parking lot. And I was like, that that's right there. So we pull around, big pile of gravel, and there's some people hanging out. So I got out, and we talked to a photographer who was there, and I was like, you know, there's a cinnamon, uh, there's, a, there's a brown bear, maybe a baby grizzly. He goes, it's not a grizzly, it's a cinnamon black bear. I said, how do you know? He said, because his parents are back and forth. And so me and Brother Paul, we get out, we leave the rest of the 10 members of our family. So two of us get out, 10 are in the van. And so we walk over there, to the edge of the ridge and we're trying to watch. And I was like, man, I want to go down there and see these parents. I want to get back over and see that baby bear. And, uh, and I was like, but I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I mean, eventually I do, but not, not right there in front of my family sitting in a van. And um, so we're there and we're waiting and we're watching. I said, well, we can't see. And I said, why don't we run back to the van? Now, if you ever run around a bear, it triggers something inside them, and they go into pursuit mode, and they chase you down and kill you. And um, if a bear ever attacks you, if you have a knife on you, if you will stab them as fast as you can, you might be able to break the record for the most stabs before you die. <laughs> They're, you're not going to fight a bear. They're just going to kill you. And so, um, so we're there, and I said, why don't we run? and just run around the corner and just run and jump in the van. And I think it'd be funny. Uh, my mother-in-law, my wife probably won't, but I think it's hilarious. And uh, so we're getting ready. I'm like, ready? One. And right as I said one, right around the corner come two ginormous black bears. And I was so thankful I wasn't on three. <laughs> so we stood there and we snapped a bunch of pictures and sent him back to get everybody. We were at a safe place. And safe distance. We watched these big, ginormous black bears walking around. And I'll tell you what, I had a lot of thoughts about 
the Bears, and I had a pistol on my hip, which I might have broken the record for the most shots fired at a bear before you died, but I'm pretty sure that nine millimeter wasn't gonna kill the bear. And so I didn't wanna to try to kill the bear at that point. Listen, David didn't have a sidearm. David didn't have a bazooka. David didn't have a bear trap and all that kind of stuff. David was fighting hand to hand with a bear and with a lion and he killed him. He, he's young, but he is all man. David, we don't get on, in on that story earlier in his life. He's recounting what happened in the past. And it's kind of weird. He brings it up and then we just move on. But the, in those moments, I mean, if you killed a lion hand to hand, I mean, grabbed him by the beard and then just slew him, you'd be talking about that for the rest of your life. If you'd killed a bear by hand, you'd be talking about that for the rest of your life. And here we just get a mention, and I think one of the reasons we get a mention is because it's in the past and it doesn't really matter that much as to what's going on here. This, this moment is going to be the defining moment in David's life. When he steps out on the battleground with Goliath, and he uses one of those smooth stones, and he throws it, catches him right between the running lights, knocks him down on the ground, slays him, takes his sword, and hacks his stinking head off. That's awesome. That's awesome. The Frady cats behind him are going to get emboldened, and they're going to go and kill Philistines. There's something about a giant standing before you with a whole bunch of Philistines behind him that prevented every other man from wanting to make a move forward. But it was this moment with the bear and the moment with the lion that gave David the boldness to step out on a battleground all by himself. David didn't have an armor bearer. David didn't have armor. David didn't have a, a sword bearer. He didn't have a sword. So he went out with what he knew and he just do, did what God led him to do. Can I tell you, that's really what we need to do. Sometimes people are like, well, I can't do nothing because I ain't got no husband. I can't do nothing because I ain't got no wife. I can't do nothing because I ain't got enough money. I can't do nothing because I don't have the health. I don't have the wisdom. I don't have the training and all that. Listen, you have all the training of your life. And we need to draw on the things from our lives. You say, well, I want to be like David. Good, kill you a bear. Kill you a lion. Now, I'm not talking about going to the zoo late at night and get, getting <laughs> felony charges on you. I'm not talking about sneaking out in the woods and, you know. But you know what? There's some lions that come up against us. There's some, there's some bad things that come up against us in our life. When? Stop running. When you run, it triggers the flight instinct, and listen, you're just going to get killed. Stop and learn to stand your ground and just fight. Learn to fight life's battles. You say, well, I can't get along with so-and-so. Grow up and learn how to get along. Amen. You say, well, I don't care what... They why don't you just learn to humble yourselves, apologize for your part in the matter, and just deal with it. Amen. Just learn to deal with stuff. Learn to sit down and look somebody in their God-given eyeballs and just talk and get it sorted out. If, if you listen, if you will listen with an open mind to their side and you express your side clearly, amazing things happen because equally informed people seldom disagree. Learn how to handle your finances. One of the biggest battles people have is finances. And you go, I just don't know why I'm broke. I bet I do. I bet I do. And I bet there wasn't a robbery involved. 7-Eleven's doing so well because you're doing so bad. The cheap furniture place is doing so well because you're doing so poorly. The, the, the used car lots, they're doing so well because you're doing so poorly. 
Learn to manage your money. Learn to handle up. I, you know, I tell people, and I know it makes them mad, but man, if you could just save up five or six thousand dollars, and listen, when you ain't got no money, I know that's an impossibility. It seems like an impossibility. But because you can't save up five or six thousand dollars to get a decent vehicle, you have to go get a car payment that you can't really afford. And so instead of doing the hard thing in your own time, now you're locked into car payments that you cannot afford. If you could, you ought to try to save up for a house. Now I'll cut you some slack on financing a house, but just so you know, if you just go get a standard 30 year note, you end up paying three times the amount for the house. You go buy it, and this is gonna age me a little bit, but we calculated when we bought a house back in 1995, and in 95, we paid $46,750 for a house, or so we thought. One day, I took the payments and multiplied it out times 12 for a year, times 30 for the length of our mortgage, and we were actually paying $120-something thousand dollars for a $46,000 house. Now, if that doesn't make you feel stupid, something's not wired up right in your brain. I mean, at best, go get a 15-year note or a 10-year note, pay a little bit extra, and you pay a lot less on the interest. And you go, I thought you were preaching about killing lions and bears. Hey, one of the greatest lions and bears you'll ever fight is your finances. And most people never do anything up for the Lord because they never kill their finances. They're, they're busy getting killed. And, and, and so they're, they're running around. That, you know, you're buying sodas out of a machine. You're buying soda, bottled water. A dollar thirty-nine for a bottle of water that costs eighteen cents. Buy the case when they're on sale. Buy twelve cases when they're on sale. Bottle water or buy a filter for the house. Do something. I mean, but we waste dollar thirty-nine on a bottle of water. Woo! I'm healthy. Yeah, you're financially sick. One of the biggest things we fight: the lions and bears of our life are things like pride. Bitterness, unforgiveness, finances, marital issues, being a jerk at work. Like, I don't know why I'm not getting promoted. Because well, nobody likes you. But I'm the best. Mm -hmm. They seem to notice. They're all a bunch of idiots. And you fit right in. They're not even making you the head idiot. I mean, listen... At some point, we have to stop in our life whining about what's wrong and just make it right. Amen. Amen. I mean, I didn't mean to get too close to home. I've already dealt with marital problems, finances, and pride. About to have a walkout. <laughs> See, when you get quiet, you think, maybe I'm just quiet and I don't breathe real loud. Maybe he won't notice. No, I notice. And I know that I'm right there where people need the most help. Listen, you can sit and whine and cry about your problems till the next year and the next year and the next year and the next year. You will never have problems repaying loans that you never take out. You will never have to fix marital problems that you don't get into. You will never feel guilty for sins that you don't commit. You will never have to lose weight that you don't pack on. You'll never have to go to rehab for drugs you never start taking. You'll never struggle with detox trying to come off the alcohol addiction that you never started drinking. You'll never have the struggles and buy the patches and this and that and switch to something else stupid if you never start smoking. You'll never have to be sorry for words that you never say. We create our own... <laughs> we're like in bare development. We're, we're, we create our own lions. And, we, and we're busy making noise about it. Just noisy. We're noisy about nonsense. We're busy about things that don't matter and we neglect the things that really matter. And then we act surprised. 
You're like, man, I heard a bunch of noise. I thought all the problems were going to be gone. No, we need to kill our lions and our bears in our lives so we can do what God wants us to do and not just make noise and create more problems. Have you ever heard a cat fight late at night? Mm -hmm. Stupid cats. <laughs> There's not enough roads and fat, fast cars for all the cats in this world. <laughs> and, but you hear, Row! Row! and you're thinking, Oh man, there's going to be one less cat when this is over. No, there's a new litter of cats now. <laughs> Just like people. They're like, oh, oh, did you hear them? They're committed this time. They're making all this noise. They're making it public and they're this. And they're going to fix the problem. No, oh look, more problems. Like another litter of cats in the alleyway. We can't talk about it. We've got to do it. We've already talked about it, and that didn't fix anything. I mean, you've got to change your, your thinking. You've got to change the way you eat. You've got to change the way you entertain yourself. You've got to change the way you operate if you really want to make changes. That's all there is. We can talk about it. You know, and listen, I'm a big fat guy, in case you didn't notice this morning. If the jacket hit it real well. They're wearing dark colors. <laughs> I know about nutrition. I know about working out. I, I, could, I could help you with a nutrition program. But nobody's lining up for me to do their nutrition program. I know what's right, but obviously I have struggled along the way with getting that right every time, or most of the time. There's something encouraging about watching somebody win. When you finally lose some weight, people are like, hey, you're losing some weight. How are you doing that? And then you get to talk to them. Now, now, now you better keep losing weight because you've encouraged some people and all of a sudden you come back, who knew? <laughs> Man, I love carrot cake. <laughs> you know? All right, what happened? You know, they, they were on your program. Now they're like, ah, oh, carrot cake, okay. Listen. You've got to go from, we sing the song, from victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Victory gives you encouragement to be more victorious. I always say it, people are like, it doesn't matter if you win or lose. It's, you ain't ever won nothing then, because I promise you it matters. It matters. I love winning, man. I love winning. I love winning. You say, what do you love winning? Everything. I don't want to lose at nothing. I don't care if I'm arm wrestling, I want to win. If I'm in a, in a, you know, going down the highway, I want to win. I, you go, they're not even racing you. Oh, yes, they are. They may not understand all the rules, but we are definitely racing. And uh, they, you know... Hey, they, they could lose in ignorance if they want to. I'm winning, bless God. I like winning at everything. Our kids are like, I want to play face 10. I want to play Uno's or something, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Daddy, I, listen, I like to win. And kids are like, oh, I lost. Well, don't be a loser. Win. <laughs> Learn to play cards. <laughs> Learn some strategy, you know? But here's the problem. that People grow up being told, you're the best at everything, and they're not. They're not. Son, you're the fastest, you're the best, you're the smartest. Not likely. But just tell your kids to be their best. Be their best. The problem is we raise up a bunch of people and they get discouraged in life because they keep losing. They keep losing. I mean, they're not even getting killed by a lion. They're getting killed by a kitty cat. Except for that one Siamese cat that I met up in Oklahoma one time, I've never ran from a little kitty cat. <laughs> that, that one Siamese cat, that thing was straight from the pits of hell. I don't know what that thing was, but I was running and hiding behind doors. I, it was, I hate that thing. But listen, winning, just take the little wins. Don't, don't do drugs today. 
Don't cuss today. Now, I know you are spiritual and you don't struggle with those things. But when I first got back into church after being backslidden for many years, I kid you not, I remember sitting in a Sunday school classroom going, um, okay, they're going to call on me to read something. God, please help me not to cuss. I just don't want to cuss in Sunday school. Not even all day. Just don't cuss in Sunday school. That's bad. And then it was at work. Then it was all day. I wanted to do right, but I just had to take the victory. I was like, didn't even cuss. Sunday school. You're, you're like, yes. Somebody's like, what are you so happy about? Well, I can't tell you. <laughs> Answered prayer. Yeah. That's how you work that one. Answered prayer. But you know what? That little victory gave me in, encouragement to get a big, bigger victory and get a bigger victory and get a bigger victory. And it, it's a big thing. So you have confidence to win again. Your confidence in the Lord and in yourself through the Lord. Where you can say, you know what? God's helping me. I can do this. I can do all things through Christ. He's the one who strengthens me. So I can do this. Thank you, Lord. He gets the glory, but you get the win. And so the win helps you get further along winning. And it prepares you for the next thing. Listen, David is not going to step out on battleground against Goliath I don't believe had he not killed the bear and killed the lion trained killers in the army stood and looked and there's this giant of a man nine feet plus tall giant and he was big and he was fast and he was a champion and if that's not bad enough there's an army full of confident-looking Philistines right behind him. So much so that everybody else said, I'll take a pass. And he was coming out going, send me a man! If he could beat me, we will be your slaves. But when I kill him, you will be our slaves. Send me a man! And, and all the volunteers went, Nobody stayed forward. Nobody stepped forward. David shows up. He's like, man, why does everybody's uniforms look so clean? I don't see any blood on a sword, on a helmet. I don't see any blood and guts laying around. I don't see any of that stuff. That's what we need to see. He's out there. He's going, man, are there any bodies out there? I don't see any bodies or broken armor. I don't see anything. And he got frustrated. And listen, that's how we ought to live our lives. We ought to be cut. We ought to expect. Listen, this is the army right here. And we ought to expect you and you and you and you and you and you and you to get some victories. We ought to expect it from one another. We ought to encourage one another. We ought to challenge one another to get over ourselves and our hang ups and our addictions and our excuses and our lame, pitiful reasoning. Mainly just get over ourselves and encourage one another to start killing some lions and killing some bears because that's going to lead us to the next thing. The thing that we're going to be remembered for forever. What are you going to be remembered for? You don't get to choose after you die. What you are going to be remembered for and what I am going to be remembered for is what we do in this life right now right now what are you going to be remembered for are you going to be remembered for being a coward for being a loser for being weak for being unable for failing again and again and again or are you going to be remembered for turning it around and getting it right in the Lord David got his victory over a lion and over a bear and over a giant and over himself. He was not perfect by any means, but he still remembered today, thousands of years later, for his heroics on a battlefield.
What are you going to be remembered for? You only get to decide now. Later it will be too late. Father, we love you. We thank you for the day. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to be victorious in our lives and our Christian living. Lord, I pray you'd help us to raise victorious children, encourage victorious brethren, never to be jealous of someone else's victory, just to cheer them on, to learn from it, and learn to win ourselves. Father, one of the greatest victories somebody can get is simply to get saved. Lord, if there's one here today that's never trusted you as their Savior, they've never believed on Jesus Christ, I pray that today would be the day that they put their faith and trust in Christ alone. Lord, I pray if somebody's not sure, that they'd just come and let us show them in the Bible how to be sure. And Lord, for those who are saved, I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to live our lives out, to live our faith out in a way that challenges and encourages one another. Lord, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name with thanksgiving.